Hello, this is John from Revit for Interior Designers. Today, we're gonna to focus on families. And in particular, we will customize an existing base cabinet family. Because honestly, it's much more work if you were to build these objects from scratch. Along the way, we'll also focus on creating face-based families and profile families. And you'll learn when those families could be useful to you during your production. So, hang tight, and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so here we have two cabinets. On my left is a basic cabinet loaded from the Revit family folder. And on the right is a customized version of the exact same cabinet where I've swapped out the knobs here for the handles. I've also changed the materials. And in fact, I have a vertical material here and a horizontal material here, these cherry boards. But they are in fact the same family. This family here, for example, is called the base cabinet. And this family here is the same, except I've customized the name and added my initial in the front. Let's take a quick look at this family and see how this was done. So I am going to clear out of here and start from scratch so you know how this is created from the, from the beginning here. So what I'll do is I'll make a brand new architectural file. I will create a quick wall here. And then onto that wall, I will add a component here and I will load a family. And here's my casework family folder here, US Imperial casework base cabinet. And I'll find the cabinet I use for this example. I'll choose the first one to use my up and down arrow and locate that cabinet, which was this one here, I believe. And I'll place it onto the wall. There's the first cabinet there. And the task here, here is how to take an existing cabinet and transform it to make it more custom. So I can open that family and currently I'm in architectural uh, tab of the project file. But if I double click on this cabinet, I'll launch the actual family itself. Otherwise I can choose it once. And here's this edit family and I'll access that file. Now I can simply modify the cabinet here and use the load into project button to load this back into my project file, which is called level one. This is the view I'm in and it'll change it. However, for this example, I just simply like to save this out as a separate file. So I can keep, I can maintain the original and I'll have a separate one uh, as well. You can do it any which way you like. So I will, do a file save as, and I'll customize it so I can have these files next to one another. So for example here, here's the file I'm currently, I currently have open. I'm gonna to navigate to a, uh, to a temporary folder here. And I will simply save the file into that folder. Here I'll name it, I'll use the same name except I will put my initials in the beginning just to prove my point where one file is customized and the other one can be left as the original. So with a unique name, I can then load this back into my project and have them side by side. Otherwise, this will replace this project file, that cabinet in 3D. It'll replace that one. I want them side by side. I'm going to clear up my views here. So this project is my, my sample file. This is my family. And let's take a look at it from the front view. Double click. And there's a lot going on here. So we'll talk about tr tricks and techniques to simplify what's on the screen. But the very first thing you do is you eliminate objects that aren't necessarily relevant any longer. So for example, whether you do it here in, in plan view, whether you do it here in elevation view, which is the front, or whether you do it here in 3D, it makes no difference. I want to get rid of these handles. So let's get rid of those handles, hit delete. Those are going to be customized. Let's go back to front. Notice here, there are some measurements here that described how 
wide and how tall those handles were and I don't need those any longer so I'm going to em eliminate those from the front view as well. I'm simply going to drag my mouse through them and delete. And here I can simply drag my mouse through all this information and delete. These lines here describe how tall those handles were. I'm going to delete those as well. As they get deleted, the dimensions that belong to them get deleted. And so, as families go, these are all measurements that control the size of the 3D model. And those that have names, like for example here, these are parameters that were established to control the height of the cabinet. So if I were to go into the family types button here, you can see that there are several parameters that have been set up already that control the depth, the height, the toe here, the depth of the toe, the height of the toe kick here, the width of the cabinet. And as I change these numbers, which is called flexing, I'll see those changes appear here on my model. There's also some parameters that control the materials. So there's a cabinet material, hasn't been assigned a material yet. There's a door drawer material parameter, has no answer yet. There's a handle material, and it's been assigned this material here for standard handles that might get applied. So first, first off, I need to draw this recessed area here on both sides of the door for my panel. Now, the quickest way to do that would simply be to uh, draw a rectangle right on top of this 3D model here. And again, if I go to 3D, you can see it right away. It's that object there. This was drawn as an extrude where someone drew these four boxes here. Edit extrude will show you what they drew originally. And the properties tell you how thick those items are that they drew. We need to draw rectangles in here. However, I need to cut out these openings and have them recessed partially into the thickness of this cabinet door. This is half inch thick. In the top view or the ground floor view here, for example, if I look at my cabinet, that right there is a drawer. And if I go to the measurement tool here, I can do a quick measurement and see that this is a half inch. Now, I need to draw an object here that will act as uh, an object that subtracts or removes a piece of this cabinet door to carve out that opening I'm after. So in front view, if, all, if this information is pretty confusing, what you can quickly do is type uh, VG for visibility graphics, VG, and simply either hide 3D models here on the first tab or hide annotations, text, dimensions, notes, that type of thing. So if I simply want to move all these annotations here, I can simply just uncheck this box and I'm left with the 3D model and also some two-dimensional lines here that were drawn to denote the door swing. So this is my 3D model. On top of this model, I'll go to Create, and I'll make an extrusion. And I'll draw something right on top of here. And I'll simply use perhaps the rectangle tool. And I'll draw a couple of openings. Now, currently, it says here that it's going to start at a half inch in terms of its thickness and go out to an inch. And the difference between these two numbers is the thickness of these rectangles I just drew. So hit apply. Look at the look at the plan view again. You notice I've drawn that. So how did it know to place it here on top of the existing cabinet doors as opposed to inside of the cabinet doors? Well, that is controlled by in the front view. Let me erase that. It's controlled by this here. You go to create, you do an extrusion. Right here it says work plane is set to the reference plane front. Escape, escape. Cancel that. Where is that? Well, if you go to the ground view, if you look at these lines here, these green reference lines, some of them may have names. And so, for example, this one here has a name right there. It says front. It also has a name here. It says front. Same name. So if you draw a reference plane and you assign it a name, you can tell Revit to draw on top of that surface if you're looking at it from the front, as if this was a piece of glass. This back here is called the back. 
reference plane. Someone drew a reference plane, clicked on it, and just typed in a name right there, or they simply came over here and typed the name there. Either way, it's the same difference. So if I'm in the front view, I can either draw something on that front plane, or I can draw something on the back plane, and I can control which one is being uh, used to draw on by simply using the create, before I draw anything, use set. And I can tell the computer, well, to draw something on the work plane called the front, which we know is just behind these cabinet doors, along the edge of the cabinet here. Or I can draw it along the back. And whatever I draw would be stuck to that back plane, as if there was a mirror back there, and I'm drawing on top of it. So this is where the default settings are. So if you need the changes ever, you simply go into set, you choose the name of the plane you're after, assuming they have names, otherwise you cannot do this, and you draw. So, because in the front view, the plan view rather, that's called front, Revit thinks I want to draw on top of that plane. So I'm gonna go to create and extrude. It's already set to the front. I would have to set it to a different plane to change that relationship. So right now I will draw these items and you see here they're a half inch away from the front and then they're further an inch away from that front plane again. So if I accept this and look here, the start of what I'm drawing is right there, a half inch away from that plane, and the end of what I'm drawing here is an inch away from that plane. From here to here is an inch. Therefore, these numbers are established using that relationship to that plane there. That's important to note. Now, I want to recess this a uh, quarter of an inch into this door and then carve it out. So I need a reference plane to do that, or I can simply choose this object and tell it to start less than half inch. So for example, I'll have it start at a quarter inch away from this reference plane, which would be here. And you see it jump back there. So now it's, it's pushing into this door on both sides. Okay, so I have that established. Now what I do, what I need now is to tell uh, these objects to be controlled. The distance between the doors and the edge of these recess areas need to be controlled somehow with reference planes. So let's bring back our, our information, type VG, and simply turn this category back on. Everything comes back. So what do we need to do this work? I need to have reference planes, some measurements, and these two objects here. Another trick you can deploy in Revit is to simply select everything and isolate those things that you're after using filter. So instead of doing everything, <coughs> excuse me, using VG, I can simply be selective and say, for example, here, check none. I want to select dimensions, reference planes, hit OK. So they're selected here in blue. And I want to select these two doors. So I'll hold Control and a little plus sign shows up. And this will also be added to my selections right there. So now what I can do is use this button here, Reveal Hidden Isolate, and just isolate everything I've selected, these elements in blue. And there they are. So this is less clutter. So now I need to just simply draw some lines that represents the offset from the edge of the cabinet to the edge of these frames. And I do that under Create Reference Planes. And let's say I need a line here, for example, a line here, a line here, perhaps one here, and one here. So now I simply need to tell Revit what is the distance between these offsets to the edge of the cabinet uh, recess panel. So that's dimensions, annotate, aligned, or type DI. And I can simply strike some measurements here. And here, so for example, there, from here to there, from here to there. And these two control the top and bottom. These control the sides. And then I need to turn this into parameter or a lock dimension. If this became a parameter here, then I'd have a menu here that I can use to control how wide these setbacks are, if that's important. 
If it's not important, you might want this to be always a fixed number. If it's always a fixed number, then you simply choose a reference point and change that to exactly what you're after. So for example, four inches. And if you want that to always be four inches, you simply lock that number. And so I am going to tell all of these to be the exact same dimension. Click on this, reference plane, change that to four inches, and lock it. Choose the measurement and lock it. This is already four inches, so when I choose it, I hit lock. Uh, this should be four inches, choose it, lock it. This should be changed. So when I choose the line, it gives me a temporary measurement, which I can type over, hit enter, and then lock it. The same here. This should be four inches. So you can sketch these things out very quickly and then use the measurement tool to get exactly the measurements you're after. Let me lock that. I want to get rid of these zero inches, uh, zero feet values, which is uh, rather distracting. So I go to manage project units, control the units here under length, and tell zero feet to be suppressed. Accept that. Actually, right there. Accept that, and then suddenly the zero feet disappeared. That's my standard. Okay, so now. We've got measurements set up. These are locked. These will always maintain a four inch dimension. And I'm going to tell these objects I drew to be stuck to these areas here using the align tool. The align tool is going to modify align right there or type AL. AL. I want this edge to be stuck to this line. And that's how these families work. Objects are controlled by the reference planes and they are locked to them. I want to go to this line with that edge, lock it. Go to here, lock that. Go to here, lock that. Go to here with this edge, lock it. There with this edge, lock that. There to this edge, lock it. Every single edge has to be aligned to a reference plane and locked. So now if I'm done here, I can then return to my normal view by resetting. And I can test the model. I've made some ref I made some Dimensions here, some reference dimensions. Let me move these out of the way. It's kind of getting crowded there. And I want to test the fact that when this changes, these will be maintained four inches away from the edge of the cabinet frame. So let's see if that works. Let me do it in 3D, for example. These are these objects here. So if I flex the model and tell the cabinet to be five feet wide, Will they be four inches away from the edges? Yes, they grew. So this is working. Bring it back to normal. If the cabinet got taller, here's the height. Let's add another foot. Apply. This stayed four inches. That's working. Bring that back to normal. So I flex the model. Those areas are working. These are solid models that are embedded into these. So I need to carve these out and to subtract them from this panel. So the concept is this. You first tell these objects here to not be solids under properties. You tell them to be voids. Now they turn orange. And voids are meant to be cut out or carved out of some object that they're intersecting. So I simply use the cut command here under modify Select this to keep, select these to cut out. Click. And there you can see the door panel's been cut away. Back in the front view, another quick thing I want to do is, is have some joints here. So let's simply show the 3D model. VG, turn off the annotations, and you're left with the 3D model. So with this 3D model, I need to cut a little joint here. So I need to grab this door and confirm that that's the model I'm going to be modifying in one second here. So to cut little joints here, because I want these panels to look like they're vertical, these here to look like they're horizontal materials. And that happens using modify split face. What that does is it allows me to click on this model here. And then here, the model turns orange. These are the boundaries of the drawing. And I can draw little legs here 
that will split this surface into multiple areas. So when a material is applied, each area here that's controlled by these boundaries, like for example, this entire area here, controlled by this orange or magenta boundary, I can paint that with the material, which is different than this one. I could, that could be a different material. Otherwise, everything's going to be the same material. I want to have little joint lines there. If you go to 3D, you'll see what I've done is edit that joint right there. That's called a split face. I also like to add some little handles here, right there and there. So let's go back to the front view and let's turn on our reference planes or VG. Let's turn these back on. Okay, let's add some reference planes here. And again, if this is if this is confusing, this is very cluttered, you can very quickly type VG and turn things off you don't want to see. For example, all of the 3D line work here, I can just turn it off. And all I'm left with is a bunch of measurements and reference planes. And then right here is where that handle knob is supposed to be, right there. So I need to draw some reference planes that controls where they will be located. And they need measurements back to the reference planes to control the position. So I type DI, do a little measurement here and here. And if it's supposed to be equal between here and here, I can then tell these dimensions to be equalized right there. That controls that line. This is supposed to be equal between this edge and that edge. So let's do another DI dimension from here to here to here. Equalize that. Same on this side. Equalize that. And notice that intersection right there is equal in the center of these panels for both sides and there. All right. So let's turn on our 3D model, VG. Turn on the 3D model again. I'm back to here. So before we get into building custom models for that, that, that knob right there, that handle, and perhaps putting a little detail around this recessed opening here, I want to apply some materials quickly. Let's go 3D. So as I select this object here, I can see if any assignment's been given to this in terms of material. So here in the property, it says material, and it, it's grayed out, and there's a little equal sign here under the associate family parameter button. That means that this 3D model here has been associated with one of these parameters here. So if I click on this and I click on that, I can see that this cabinet has been assigned the parameter named cabinet material. Again, parameters are these menu items. So somebody made a menu item called cabinet material. And this has been assigned to cabinet material. What about these drawers? That's been assigned to door drawer material. So these already have materials assigned to them. So if I go into here, I know that if I change this, I know what it's going to affect on the model. I can use these buttons here to launch the material library. And for this example, I'm going to use Cherry. I'll do a little search for Cherry and see if there's any Cherry in my projects. There's no Cherry currently in my project, but there is Cherry here loaded into my Revit folders on my computer. So I'm going to tell this Cherry here to be uploaded into my project. These are my project materials. I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to rename these to make them unique. So here, I'll call this John Cherry. And I want a horizontal board. So let's call this horizontal. I want to right click on this, rename it JM Cherry Vertical. And as soon as I do that, I want to go to appearance and I want to press that button there to make sure that always says zero. This is how many other materials are affected once these materials are changed. There's one other material that will be affected if I change this. So let's clear that out for both of these. I change these names to something more unique because when I upload Cherry again in the future, if I had to, it would erase any changes I've made. So I want these to be more custom so there's never a naming problem when I upload this Cherry or that Cherry, it won't erase my work. So this is meant to be a horizontal board. If I click on the material there, you can see it's vertical. It's meant to be horizontal. So 
So by rotating it here 90 degrees, it makes it more horizontal. This and this are also pictures of that wood that's meant to control its appearance in 3D, and they should match the orientation and size of this picture. They should also be horizontal. Click on that. You can see simply a copy of the material in black and white. That should be 90 degrees. This should be 90 degrees. And so these are all horizontal. Whereas these here, if I click on this, these are vertical. I've got two types of the same material. So I simply want to tell the cabinet material to be vertical. Double click and it's going to sign here. The drawers, these drawers, I want the boards to go left to right, more horizontal. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in here. You got to be careful when you do this because the name has to be spelled exactly accurate. Otherwise, you won't apply it. But I know it's called horizontal. Hit apply and OK to save your work. When I return to that menu, see the work has been saved. I can then simply go to here to shaded view and see that the colors are being assigned correctly. And then here I can go to realistic to see that the shows are being applied correctly. And these are vertical. And so now I have to tell these areas here to be vertical. This is already set to horizontal. This is set to horizontal. But anything you want to change the orientation of, because this has been assigned already. This object's been assigned cherry horizontal materials. But some of the areas here are horizontal, but they should be vertical. So that's where the paint command comes in. And that's why I added these joints here earlier. Because what that does, it allows me to go to modify here, paint. For example, do a search for JM materials, my materials that appear. I can grab this vertical material and I can literally go in between these boundary lines right there and paint that a vertical material chosen here. So it overrides the materials that have been assigned and forces the vertical to be here. And that's what the joints do. They separate the areas out, the boundaries. That one, that one, and that one. If I like, I can make that vertical as well. Otherwise, I can leave it horizontal. Completely up to you. This is done. So in terms of materials, this work is, is ready. I can go back to Shaded View and leave it alone. And now I can add my little knob here. Let's look at that in the front view. I need to add a little knob right there at the crosshairs. So the door handles are created as a separate object. You can create them here, but I find it to be easier if I if I make a separate 3D model file, separate family of the knob itself, and then I can use that knob in other projects. Perhaps I'm making wall cabinets or other styles of these cabinets. I can reuse that knob if it's a separate file. It's, it's easier to use it in that in that way. So I will open the knob I've created to open a family and I'll navigate to the folder where I previously created these these knob elements so for example here I've made this door knob here now there's a knob there and how it was created was I went to File, New, Family, and of these options here, I chose a generic family that's face-based. This one here, which means when I draw something in between these crosshairs, I draw something, it will want to be snapped onto the surface of an object once it's used in my project. And that's this dummy surface here. So I drew that object right there on top of the surface. So let's look, take a look at that from the side view. Let's see the front view. And there's my little object there. Let's click on that and edit that shape. So here, I simply just drew this profile using my, my drafting techniques here. This is called a revolve. And I drew this object here and added some measurements here just to uh, 
remember what sizes I was using to make this, this shape. This is not required. So from a side view, if I wanted to create one of those objects again, just quickly as an example, you go to create and revolve is here, which allows you to draw half of the shape you want to create and it'll spin it in a circle to create a 3D model. So if I were to quickly sketch one out, I can use my drafting tools here. I tend to start with a, a box. Let's say this was three quarters. Let's say this is meant to be inch and a half. And this is, this is half of the shape, this half over here. And using these drafting tools, I can, I can simply, you know, let's just draw something quickly in here. Let's do a uh, split so I can trim these lines. Here's trim. Trim this to there, trim this to there. And if I draw half of something, here's another little example. If I draw half of something and I accept this, it'll give me a little error message because it's missing the axis of revolution. Where is the center line? So right here where it says axis line, I need to physically pick a line that represents the dead center of this object when it's spinning it like a vase, which in this case I use that green line there. In this example, I'll simply use axis line and pick this edge. Oh, let me pick that edge, let me just draw it here. There, I just drew a little line there. It's gonna spin around that vertical line. Previously I used pick and I chose this dotted line right in the center of this design. You see there, there's my design in 3D. Take a look in 3D here. There it is right there. That's the object I just created. So, this object here was done the exact same way. And you can quickly see when I edit that design, this is what I drew right here. That object. If I type VG to turn off my annotations, I can see what I drew right there. There's the shape I drew, right there. VG, turn on my annotations, which are my notes. And then I simply use the, the annotate measurement command and do some measurements here. So if I came back to this later, I can see where I might want to adjust some measurements and move things around. This is just future reference, not required. What's important to draw these things dead center in the middle of this crosshair here, that's also showing up here in plan, this crosshair and that crosshair is dead center of that object. So if you were to draw something like this, let me clear out all these views here. Let me use that button there. If I you were to draw something like this, dead center on this object here, this, this plane, and I load it into my cabinet project here, it's, it'll be loaded into the model. And you see it needs a surface. There's no surface here. When I place it here, it begins to want to attach itself. Either that recessed area or the cabinet fronts. Let me hit escape. Let's go to 3D. From my point, that handle can now be assigned to any face. The face is a surface of something. So if I go to create component, I can find that handle here. And you can see as it comes out, it wants to be attached to some surface, this surface that surface. These surfaces are called faces. Here, 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 inside there. You can place these anywhere you like. So I'm going to place it here and here. And in the front view, I need to tell these objects to be snapped to these green reference planes so it controls where their placement is located. So as the cabinet gets bigger and taller, these will continue to follow the height and depth and width of the cabinet as changes are made. So AL is for a line. Go to here with the center of that, snap it. Go to here with the center of that, snap it. Here, center, snap. Here, center, snap. Revit finds the center of those objects based on the reference planes here. These green lines here are invisible. And back in my cabinet, I can use those invisible lines that showed up as a dark blue line to align with these reference planes. That's why they appeared. That's what's useful to place these dead center of their crosshairs when you open up families. That work has been done. Now, how about materials? You click on this object and you see here there's no material parameters. 
you go edit type, there is no material parameters here, except for knob material. And that's because, if I go back, let me clear this out. Let me go back to my knob drawing. If I click on my doorknob, you see here there was a material assignment. I then chose that button there. I chose that button there. I made a new material parameter, parameter, a type parameter, and I named it knob material. So if someone changes the menu that says knob material, it'll affect the material for that knob. So I created it in this file. I loaded it into my cabinet project. And when I choose to edit that knob, there is the option. If I didn't create it, this wouldn't be here and I would not be able to change the knob material. So the material for the knob here, I can associate it with a material. I can simply go to here and choose a material and this knob will be associated with that material I choose. That's one method. The other method is, if I look at my parameters here, well, there might be a parameter already set up in this project that controls the knob materials. And as it turns out, someone already made a handle material and they've told it to be cabinets-handles as the name of the material here. That work has been done. So if I tell the, hand, the knob to match whatever handle material is, it'll make it this answer, this value. So if I simply click on the knob, and go edit type, and here tell the knob to be associated with another parameter, it'll match it. So what I do here is I choose knob, I match the handle material. So whatever this is set to will get passed into this. So if I change this once in my parameters, it'll change this knob. I'm going to accept that. So now if you'll note, go to 3D here, that material has been changed. I have a group of parameters. This parameter is set to cabinet handles. It turns out that that knob looks to this menu to find its materials. It's assigned to handle material, which happens to be this. The cabinets have to be assigned to cabinet material, which happens to be this. The door, the drawers and doors are assigned to this parameter, door, drawer, material, and they happen to be assigned to this value, this material. So because that work is happening, this will effectively look like realistic mode. There, it look like that. And that's what you're after. Let's close that knob drawing here. I'm going to close that out. This is my sample project file we started with. Let's load this new family into this file and plant it right next to the door. Here's the load family button of the family. Here's the family. Load it into this project and put it right next door. So now when I go to architecture, component, place a component, I've got my standard cabinet. here, base cabinet, and I also got John's base cabinet, and I'm using that one there for that. Now let's see what happens with this, this family. Let's look at the materials first. So here it seems that uh, the materials didn't get passed into here. And there's something funny happening here where I, I applied materials using the paint command to these two areas. And there's some confusion about this area here. For some reason, but the paint command is not applying a horizontal material here. In fact, it missed that one altogether. And so I'm going to force the issue. I'm going to force these areas here that are not working properly to be horizontal. Everything that's gray is going to get assigned eventually by clicking on the, the product, going to edit type, and simply applying the materials, here are the parameters, using the answers here. The only one that passed into here has been this one here. These two are missing the answers. 
but I will fix this first to force these to be horizontal since there seems to be a bug with rabbit. This should not have happened like this. These are the only things that were painted. So let's paint these horizontal just to force the issue. Go back to your model. And although they look right here, something happened where they weren't right when they're loaded. So I'll go to paint. I'll go to horizontal and I will paint that surface right there. And force them to be painted. So when I load it in my project and I overwrite the existing model here with my new changes, you see, I forced them to be painted horizontal. So now they are working. So let's apply materials and see everything works, functions properly. So my model, click on the, the product, edit type, change the parameter. What should that be? Well, I choose this and hit the material library button. And it turns out when I load a family here into a project, it also loads that family's materials. Even though they weren't created in this file, here they came through. They were copied into this project file. It's one of the benefits of loading the families. They come with the materials. So the cabinet should be vertical. The drawers here should be horizontal. Handles are handles. Hit apply, hit OK. There's your product. Right there. Now let's make sure that it looks correct in all the views though. Let's look at the east elevation. Okay. There's something happening here. Uh, it turns out that in terms of the east elevation, they're showing the cabinet profile itself, but they're not including the door. And here is a 3D item here that is appearing that uh, I'd rather not see it from the side view. This knob here, for example, shouldn't be showing up in the side view either. Okay, something's happening there in elevation. Let's look at the front, which is north or south, south in this case. Well, that looks fine. I mean, you get your knobs and everything. And again, from the west, the same problem. And let's look at the floor plan. It looks like these knobs are showing up here, whereas normally they just show up as dotted lines for the overall size of the cabinet. So this is extra things I don't want to see. Okay, so back in 3D view, let's find those problems and solve them. So let's clear all these views I opened right there. I'm down to one view for this file, one view for this file. Let's go back into the family. Let's find that, uh, that object here. So these objects here, I can control their visibility or when they appear, when they're being used, when do they appear? I can control that by using visibility settings. So here they'll show up in 3D view and they'll also show up in the plan and front and left elevations. I don't want to see them in the plan and I don't want to see them in the left and right. I might want to see them in the front view, but not these others. And in terms of level of detail, the bottom here, this button here, when would you want to see these door handles? I'm just going to accept coarse, medium, and fine. They'll always appear in terms of the level of detail. So <clears throat> I made that change. I loaded it into the project, and I tested here. I'll override this. So let's see. In the floor plan, will these knobs disappear? Yes. Except that one did not. I must have forgotten to do the same. This item here does not show up in the plan or the left view, left and right view. Loaded it back in my project, load the changes. There it's gone. Is it in the front view? Which would be in this case, I think south. Yes, they appear here. Are they in the east and west, which is left and right? They do not appear. But there's something else sitting right here. And I'm not sure what that is just yet. So let's take a look. Let's clear this out. And it's nice to troubleshoot these, these products sometimes. What is that? Looks like a, a drawer. I am not quite sure. So here's my family. Let's take a look at it from the side view. Now let's do this side here. So what is Hmm. 
I'm not sure what that object is. So, I wonder if it's coming from the handle. So let's take a handle and place it somewhere else just to see if the handle has something to do with that shape that we were looking at. So here, let's place a random handle. Create component. Put the door handle here. Let's see if that comes through with that shape in the background. Okay, it came through, but there's nothing behind it. So it has nothing to do with the handle. Let's go back here and erase that. So it has nothing to do with the handle. And it seems to be, if I look at my front view, uh, let's see here. Oh, I see what it is. It seems to be, let me close this out for a second here. Okay, so this is my family. This is the project file. It seems to be this cabinet. <laughs> I'm looking at it sideways and I can see its handles in that drawing. Let me delete this cabinet. And by the way, I need to upload this new version without that knob right there. So let's do that as well. Let's load this into the project. There. So from the side elevation, it was looking past this cabinet looking at the other cabinet and the other cabinet happens to have the handle showing up in, in the side view. So I erased it. Sometimes it's as simple as that. But there is your completed cabinet file. And there's a little method how to troubleshoot different weirdness that might happen with your drawings. Here I brought back our, our cabinet. Back on the screen is one other detail I'd like to add to this customized cabinet here once that all the other details have been resolved and materials are being assigned correctly I'd like to add a little detail inside this cabinet reveal here that traces around this recessed area I have to apply it to this family on both sides so let me double click on this and open this family again I'm in the family file and let's go back here to hidden line and the trick here is to use another type of creation tool here. This one is called Sweep, where if I draw a profile, which is a 2D drawing, I can trace a path, and that detail will turn into a 3D model along the path that I've chosen. So the best way to do that is to create a file, new family, and do a profile family. This is a generic profile here, here. And that can be used for any number of purposes in Revit. In this case, I'm going to use it to detail out uh, the cabinet uh, into your recessed area. That's a profile. So I've made a profile. Let's open that. And we'll take a look at that profile family in the archive folder. I'll use a profile here called door trim. And similar to a generic family for the knob I created earlier. This is, comes with crosshairs. If you look closely, I've drawn this little detail here. Using the line command here, I can draw this shape here, right there. Again, I've added the measurements here for my own sake, just to understand uh, the dimension of this object. But the recess panel is a quarter inch recessed. And I'm adding a little detail here that's an eighth of an inch with a little half round, as an example. And I've drawn this using the line command, create line. And I save this file. So once this file is saved, I can load it into my current project and use this drawing, this 2D drawing, in my current project. So I will load it here into my cabinet project. Hit OK. Now it's loaded into this project. Now I, I, all I need to do now is uh, Select the face of this cabinet as my drawing surface and trace out the edge of this cabinet for that future profile detail. Let's go to the front view. 
Let's turn everything off since, again, this might be confusing to people. VG, turn off all the annotations. Look, here's my drawing. Let's go to the set command and tell the computer here to select the face of these cabinet doors. And I can't currently because the face of the cabinet doors don't have a reference plane and it haven't been assigned a name. So rather than choosing the name of a plane, I'm going to choose pick plane, hit OK, and I'm going to select the face right there of the cabinet doors themselves, right there. So the front face or surface of these cabinets now become the object on top of, on top of which I'm drawing. So when I go to sweep, I can draw a rectangle with the pick path command. And I can pick these edges here. Or with sketch path, I can simply use these tools and draw. Uh, in this case, I can simply draw a rectangle. Draw a rectangle here, for example. And I want to lock these into position. Use the pad, padlocks. Now they disappear, which is kind of confusing. They escape twice. When you choose these, you see there are constraints set up, and it's confusing that they disappear. And it disappeared because I've turned off my annotations. But if I simply pull these away, you can see that there are they are working. Pull them away. They are working. If they weren't working, use the align command and align them up with the edges of these reveals or the, the setback. This one, these are all working. I'm going to draw another one here, right on top of that cabinet right there. And you choose the padlock. And they're all controlled now by the edge of that recessed area. Now, that's going to be a little test because I'm not sure if it'll take a path and do both. In fact, I doubt that it will. More than one loop is not allowed, so hit escape. So this is actually a quick mistake. I'm going to erase that one. Delete that. Let's just use this path here. Hit OK. Now, if I look in 3D, you'll notice that there's little crosshairs here, and they expect you to draw something right there at that intersection. I can do that from the side view, for example, and simply just draw a little drawing here, a little detail right there. But I find it easier just to load the drawing I've previously created as a profile. And you do that here, select profile. You've already loaded it earlier. And if you hadn't, you can always use load profile and find the file and select it and it'll load it into this project. But I already did that work. So here I can just simply choose it from the menu and there it is. And it's in the wrong place. It's, it's out of sync. So I can try flipping it. That's not right. I can try changing the angle. Let's see, 180 degrees. Hit apply. And there is the right position. So imagine this detail here is going to trace this black path. It's going to go left, up, across the top, and back down the right side. And this is the drawing that it's going to put there. And the back of this drawing is sitting right here on the back of that recessed area. You see it there? So when I accept it, that's the detail there. And that's that rounded edge and that recessed panel right there. And there's your detail. Flex the model to test to make sure it works. So let's make sure that if I change the size, so let's say five feet, that detail follows me. And in fact it does, you see? This should be three feet. Hit apply. That's working. Test the height. That's working. And this is where you can guarantee that your file is not going to go off the rails when you're making changes to your model. You always want to flex your model, make sure this work is, is, is established and working properly. Let's let's do that path over here on the right side. So again, it's create a sweep. I'm going to sketch a path. I'm going to make it trace that rectangle there. I'm going to lock all the edges. I'm going to accept it. And here I'm going to pick the profile drawing, which is called John's door trim. I'm going to accept it. And you see it put it in the wrong spot. Control Z to undo that. Or the undo command is here. I'm still in the place where before I selected the checkbox here. So let's fix this. It's the details in the wrong spot. So let's take a look in 3D. And you see this time, it's at the top of this and when it should be flipped over or underneath. So, again, uh, select profile, this profile here. You can have access to these tools. 
and one of these will help you rotate this around and under. Let's try flipping it 180 degrees. Hit apply, and there. It's now, if I do, I'm holding, the, I'm holding shift in my mouse wheel to look underneath it, rotating around. You can see that the back of this detail will be lining up with that edge. And it will trace this edge and down and around correctly from that location there. Now that I've rotated this profile 180 degrees. So you have to try these measurements here sometimes to move it left and right, up and down. You, you can try angles, you can try flipping. Ultimately you arrive at the right position for your model. So with that being said, I can accept this and there my detail went around the edges and around the bend. What material would that detail become? When I look at my realistic view here, it doesn't have a material yet. So these are my parameters. These are the ones I have set up already. Do I need a new parameter here that says door trim material? Or can I use an existing parameter on this list and tell it to become this detail and control its material? Either you can select it and assign it to one of these parameters or make a new one. It's completely up to you. Let's, let's make a new one just for practice. I can click on this object. And here, in fact, I'll do them both. I hold shift or control and I can select them both in blue. And here there's material and there's no material assigned to it. And I would choose the associate parameter. I make a parameter, it becomes a menu up here that can use to control that detail. And here I can make a new, I don't have a material or uh, parameter setup that controls it. So let's make one up. Let's make something called trim material. Hit OK. So now when trim material here, trim material, when trim material gets modified, it'll control this. And if I choose to place a material there now, I can choose one of these or I can choose any other material, for example. It can become whatever you want it to become. Just as an example, let's see if there's another material. Let's see, there's a material here. For, for example, mahogany. Let's load that into my project. Mahogany. I'm going to assign mahogany to that material. Hit apply, and there it changes to a different kind of material. Or you can choose another material that's perhaps darker and a darker stain. The point is, you can then assign a material to this and it has its own parameter, its own controls. So when I load into my project here, my sample project, overwrite the existing, you can see the detail shows up now. And you can also see that when I go to edit this model, it now has a new parameter called finished material, which currently set to mahogany, but I can change it to whatever it is I like. And that's how you create a new material parameter and assign it. Otherwise, I can tell it to be one of these materials, parameters, and they will control that trim. I made a new one instead. It's completely up to you. And that concludes this exercise of how to modify existing families, customize them in any which way you like, and you'll notice that this cabinet now has quite a few variations in size that you can use in your project. Just simply fixing one can create a whole library of base cabinets pretty quickly. Okay, that's it for now. Please share any questions you might have.